All right, great. Um, I'm Andrew Hogan. I'm here with Ipa Rubing, which is the founder of Chess Boxing. Hi, Andrew. And we're here at Toa 15, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, chess boxing, I guess. So, you know, I'll start with the first question. I think the thing that's most interesting to me is why chess and why boxing? It's a pretty crazy combination. Yeah, I, why chess and why boxing? Um, let's have a think about it. I mean, it's completely odd and crazy. I mean, how to combine two worlds that actually don't fit together, that, ha then, that don't have any connection. It all came differently because I wasn't thinking of creating a sport. It was just the moment that happened. So basically the inspiration came from a comic. And the situation was I was sitting in a bar with a friend and I just told him, talked, um, I just uh, said to him I started boxing. And he said, me too. And then it happened that we used to play chess at our student time. So, and then I said, okay, let's have a fight. And he said, yeah, let's have a fight. And then I remembered, I recalled this comic that I used to read when I was 17 by Anki Bilal, called Equator. And there you see a depiction of a very weird sport called chess boxing. And I said, okay, listen, we used to play chess, now we can box. Let's measure ourselves on every level and do a chess boxing fight. And he said, what? And that's basically how it all started. And in this craziness, it does actually make sense because you're combining the number one thinking sport with the number one fighting sport into a hybrid that you know, like creates a whole universe of itself. Yeah, I mean, I guess the combination of thinking and fighting, right? It, it's almost primitive, right? And fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you find, like, what, what's the goal of putting together those two very brutal you know, brutal intellectual and brutal physical worlds, and how does that actually come out? I mean, uh, the goal of, of, of this sport is creating a universe, uh, you know, for itself. It's basically, so now we don't have the chess player who has a chicken breast or the fighter who has no brain. Now we, ha we create fighters that have brain and brawn. Mm -hmm. So, and there's all this uh, prejudices you know, about fighters and about, uh, you know, like we break it up, we mingle this world and created something that is actually very, you know, like intellectual, intellectually stimulating. Um, so we're creating a sport, but more of all, we want to create some kind of intelligent entertainment. We want to create a sport for the creative class, what is like HBO for television, you know, it should be chess boxing for, for people who are not necessarily watching television <laughs> but they are, 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 are much into sports but this they actually really like so we want to create like you know like something of value there are a lot of values in chess boxing that i think are are very interesting it's it's redefining masculinity in a way because they have all this testosterone and adrenaline but in a chess boxing fight you have to be able to control it and think long term strategically so this is, I think, something that is worth quite a lot in our society. You can be extremely ambitious, but you also have to be able to control it and think long term. What is a strategy? How can you push things for forward? So, yeah, that is, that is, there are a lot of things to chess boxing. Of course, we want to become Olympic and we want to go, we want to bring chess boxing to you know, like San Francisco instead of uh, Las Vegas, by the way. And we want to create like a world championship of, you know, the smartest, toughest men on the planet. But I think that the, the real goal behind it all is to create value and a set of beliefs that we truly believe in. Yeah. And so your, your career prior to this, you were famous as a performance artist mm -hmm. in a lot of worlds. Yeah. Um, is this just one big performance art piece for you? <laughs> oh, if you want to dig down deep this uh, uh it is clearly it's a sport and uh i started a company and and we're working with investments it's just like risk capital so we work with we're working on medialization with television networks etc etc but deep down it still feels like an artwork to me and i think that's also valuable for every every entrepreneur who's passionate about uh his, his or her product is to see your work as artwork. And there's actually a theory in, 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 um, in art, which is the theory made by Joseph Beuys, which is called social sculpting. It's basically making an artwork that, that creates a reality. 
and that influences and touches society, you know, directly. Because art is always a lot of creativity and irony. But in chess boxing, there is no irony anymore. But it came out of this, you know, artistic idea. So to me, it's like one big social sculpture. But it's obviously a company, a sport. Yeah, that's great. And um, I understand this is your first year at TOA. Yes, it so is. So first, first year at Tech Open Air here in Berlin. Um, what are your first impressions? What do you think? I mean, especially as an artist where yeah. you're seeing all this startup culture and creativity come in one place. Like, what's been your, what's been your initial impression? I think it's, it's really uh, inspiring. And there's one thing I, I talked to Nico uh, yesterday about it. What I think is really interesting is to mingle the art world and the startup scene even more. There's one guy here called Hercules, who's a painter and an investor, a brilliant guy. And like we were talking about, like you know, like the creative side of being an artist and the the character that artists, you know, have, and then the character and the creativity of an entrepreneur, a passionate, uh, you know, a startup entrepreneur. And actually, there are lots of similarities. And the creativity of an artist can be extremely inspiring for every entrepreneur and vice versa, because the artist doesn't have any influence out there, and the entrepreneur does. And so that this is something that I think could be really interesting to, uh, to you know, like to continue that path even more next yep. year. Yeah, that's really great. And so what's next for chess boxing? What's the, what's the next step on the roadmap for you? Uh, we're preparing a, a, an equity crowdfunding campaign on Cedars.com, uh, the world's biggest crowd investing uh, company. Uh, so we're putting 10% of, of the company online for So we're raising half a million euros at the moment. And there's uh, actually, uh, I'm, you know, like an artist, a performer myself and a marketer in many ways. So I'm, I'm going to put 1% uh, uh, of the company at stake for my very, very last chess boxing fight, which will be in September. So oh, you're, you're retiring. Yeah, like, I mean, this, <laughs> this is my third comeback. I'm, I'm getting old. My bones are getting old, and it's like starting to hurt training. Seriously. Just, like, just like every professional athlete, you can't actually retire, right? Yeah, no, I can't, and I want to step back into the ring. So this Friday, I'm going to do a demonstration fight, and then in September, I'm going to put 1% of the company at stake, for ev uh, uh, and my opponent can be any professional investor that thinks he or she can beat me in a chess boxing fight. If he does, he gets 1% of the company for free. If he doesn't, he has to pay for it. That sounds exciting. Will that be live streamed on HBO? Uh, Periscope, <laughs> more likely. <laughs> Even better. The future. Yes. Yeah. That's great. All right. Thanks so much, Ipo. It was really nice to meet you and enjoy the rest of your time at TOA. You're welcome. I will.